Christmas. Merry Christmas. How's everybody doing? Good. Good evening. A little fatigued? Yeah. And fun, kind of tired? No. I was up there over there. Welcome to the first Sunday after Christmas. And uh, through the birth of Jesus, we get to see our salvation. And through his birth, we are no longer a slave to sin, death, and the devil. As we gather, the gospel for the first Sunday after Christmas takes us to the temple in Jerusalem, where Jesus is brought by Mary and Joseph. And presenting him there, they are affirming that he is dedicated to God as the firstborn son. But he is much more than a son. He is the son. In her classic hymn text, German hymnist Elizabeth Kruger celebrates his coming as she writes, the only son from heaven foretold by ancient seers, by God the Father given, in human form appears, no sphere his light confining, no star so brightly shining as he, our morning star, Jesus is the one in whom we see our salvation whose light guides our way through life, and whose presence enlightens our world with joy, and we worship him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Your righteousness, O oh God, reaches the high heavens. You 
My lips will shout for joy when I sing praises to you. My soul also will
uh, we continue with our intruded people. The Lord has spared his holy arm before the eyes of all nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand is a holy arm that works salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has revealed his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a glory to the Lord, all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has spared his holy arm before the eyes of all nations, and the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God.
In our ministry, uh, we're going to do something a little different this time. We're going to do the celebration of the day. And uh, Charles has found a good melody for this song, and you will catch on when you hear it. The days immediately following the celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus on Christmas Day have been utilized by the church as a time for a special commemorations. December 26th is the festival of St. Stephen the first martyr, and December 27th is the festival of St. John, one of the best known disciples, known as the disciple whom Jesus loved. John plays a prominent part in the years of Jesus' early ministry and is one of the most active of the apostles in the time after our Lord's ascension, when the Christian church had its beginnings. He is honored for his contributions to the New Testament including the Gospel according to St. John, the three epistles, the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. John is commemorated in artwork, in literature, and in song. And today, together we sing stanzas one and eight of the hymn, By All Your Saints in Warfare. <laughs> Thank you. 
gather as God's people and as heirs of an eternal inheritance. Let us pray for the whole church and for all who bear the name of Jesus Christ, who is our light and our salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we remember St. John, Apostle and Evangelist, we pray for the church, asking that through her joyous news of salvation be proclaimed as the Holy Spirit directs. Give us faith to acknowledge and rejoice in the fellowship that we share in Christ with people here and in every place. That we may see in each sister and brother in Christ a reflection of your glory, Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all, watch over our nation and grant your divine favor to all who bear office in our land, especially the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of California, and to all who make, administer, and judge our laws, and all who have authority over us, help them to serve all those in their care according to your holy will, that we may live in peace and in safety. Save us from the pestilence and plague, from unseasonable weather and the dangers that are ever present in our lives. Grant us your blessings as one calendar year closes and another begins. Lord, in your mercy, give a special measure of blessing to those with special needs, especially we remember the sick, the shut-in, those dealing with depression, those who sorrow and others known to us at this time are in need of prayer. Dear Lord, we, we pray for Faith Lutheran Church, and we pray, pray for Mimi and Oli and Juan and Wilma and Pastor Sleep and, and John Green, and we pray for Chris and Ed and Emma and Effie and Asia and Peter and Theron and Leslie. Lord, put your arms around our, our blessed sister Burl, who unexpectedly lost her brother this morning. Amen. And uh, bring comfort and consolation to her family. And Lord, do everything for the good. So let us remember that, that there's no more pain. He's in a blessed place with you. It's hard to understand, but Lord, you do everything that's good for us. Bless Rudolfo. Lord, we bless all who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. We bless the shared ministries here on our campus. Lord, as people travel during this holiday season, help them to arrive safely and healthy at their destinations. We pray for our military and our college and our high school and our preschool students. Bless all the kids as they learn to work online to further their education. Lord, bless the families that's going through bereavement. Our sister Burrell, the family of our assignments, and the family of Yolanda Williams. Help us to be people who bless and encourage and strengthen all those in our circles of relationships and beyond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign Lord, we remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church on earth, who now rest from their labors. Lord, comfort and console all who have lost loved ones this year. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joys of heaven. Bless the communion we share on earth as we await the supper of the Lamb in his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you know that we need, dear Lord, grant us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. We now have the opportunity to bless the Lord with our offerings. <laughs>
some of that ragtime? <laughs> Please rise. <laughs>
gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came into the Spirit, into the temple, and when, and when the parents brought in child Jesus, to do for him according to the custom of the law. He took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation to you that you have prepared in the presence of all people a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that the thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, a tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin. And then as a widow until she was 84, she did not depart from the temple, worshiping, fasting, and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Said in the land of the Lord. 
pair of turtle doves or two pigeons. This is the way that Jesus fulfilled the law of Moses with the help of Mary and Joseph. Eight days after his birth, he was circumcised and he received his name. Forty days later, they went to the temple in Jerusalem to offer sacrifice in place of their firstborn son. According to the law, every firstborn son should be dedicated to God or sacrificed to God. But the parent could offer a sacrifice in place of their son because God accepted a ram instead of Isaac, the firstborn of son of Abraham, and a lamb instead of the firstborn sons of the Israel of Israel in Egypt. The book of Leviticus, it commanded us to sacrifice a lamb, a dove, or a pigeon. Or if the family did not have enough resources, they could sacrifice two turtle doves or two pigeons. Our text indicates that Joseph and Mary, they took the second option because they were humble people. It is the right that is foreshadowed, the sacrifice of the son of Abraham and the only begotten son in our places. Jesus is our substitute. In the temple they found Simeon, to whom it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit, who would not see death before he saw the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit to the temple. And when he, when he put the parents, he took the baby Jesus. And he did to him according to the law. He took him into his arms and he blessed God. of Abraham, which covers and includes all the nations. Jesus Christ came for all the nations. He came for all of us. Therefore, Jesus Christ is the light for revelation to all the nations and the glory of the people of Israel. Recall Simeon said directly to Mary, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many. That includes us. This child is set for our undoing, for our sin, for our transgressions, and for a sign that will be opposed. Many people will oppose Jesus. I don't know why. The consequences are terrible. The consequences is terrible. And the sword will, be, will also pierce your very soul so that the thoughts of our hearts will be revealed. This child came to free us from the power of sin, the power of the devil, and the power of death. This child is the light of the world. speaks of freedom from the condemnation of law, which is the power of sin and the devil and death. To many people in the world, Christians are foolish. We give to the church. We support the sick. We visit the shut-in. Many people see these things of no value until the tragedy is upon them. Then they're looking for a church looking for a say. God is here all the time. We, as Christians, we trust in the good book, the Bible. The world laughs at believers in Jesus Christ. 
But in Christ, the good book says, blessed are the meek, blessed are the lonely, blessed are the humble ones. Those are who Jesus blesses. We are the meek. We are the humble. Jesus came because his will was to lift us up. He causes the rising of many in Israel. Christ will lift you up. Christ will lift me up. In our moments of despair, we, are, we turn to the Lord. Why? He's the light of the world. When we have those dark moments, remember, behold, this child was presented to God for our doings. This is this not, Jesus didn't, didn't come just for the Jews during this time in history. All men read and react to Christ. But we react either with faith or with disbelief. Do you trust that only Christ is the path to eternal salvation? Or do many of us put stock in our own ability to earn or win, to make the world a better place? We're to put our stock in God. <coughs> he says, is it you or is it Christ? Is it him or is it me? Is it you? Or is it him? Do you really want him or do you really want to do everything on your own? Do you want to believe in yourself more than you believe in God? When we see down to the place that we believe that our works have taken us and will persevere us, we will fail. But if it is in Christ, Christ is the winner and the earner of all things that we have. us up in righteousness and he has blessed us with his forgiveness we already possess his glory and at this moment it's not visible all the time but on the final and the last day if you are a believer you will receive his glory but during this our earthly journey we continue to live humbly we must be humble so at the right time Christ will lift you up don't block your blessings with your own ego. Why do so many fail? Because they fall. We can fall, but with God we will not fail. Once you fall, let God rise you back up. Christ says that many in Israel will fall. He doesn't say they will fail. He says they will fall. Israel had a great advantage of being taught the word of God. They should have been well versed in the truth. It's the same thing today. Why do people run from the word of God when they can get the, you know, the message of joy and comfort and consolation? Many do and many do not. Christ demands that he is the first and he is the most important place in our life and in our heart. We are to trust in him and we are not to trust in anybody above him. We will speak against him in our moments of weakness. We lash out at God when things don't go our way. Sometimes we're not even aware of the things that we do and we begin to fight against idols that are bringing us nothing but despair. We struggle with the moral and principle law of the Ten Commandments. God says, place no one above him. None of us can fulfill the laws perfectly because of our sinful nature. But the birth of Jesus, it was for us. Jesus Christ fulfilled all the law in our places. Jesus Christ is the good news. For those of us who feel the weight of our sins, we have the good news of the light of the world. 
Christ has done everything for us. The child is for lifting up those who want to be free. We want to be free from our sins, and we want to have a good relationship with God, but God also says, love our neighbors. We need to have a good relationship with our neighbors, our family, but God says, put him at the top of the list when you want a new friend. Start with him. That is what the light of the world will do for all of us. This child is a downfall for the self-righteous. Many do not feel the weight of their sins, and many people feel they have no need for a Savior. Therefore, many reject Jesus. But on the final day, there will not be another opportunity for you to repent. Repent now for the forgiveness of all your sins. Don't try to repent when the storm will come. <laughs> many of the people of Israel thought they were saved because of their own identity. As children of Abraham, they said their lifestyle didn't matter. They could worship what they want. They could fornicate. They could do everything because they thought it was in their bloodline. What does the Holy Spirit do? He works on your heart. Jesus will come again and he will divide the believers from the non-believers. Those who believe in him and those who do not. Only the believers have the hope of salvation. What causes people in the faith to turn away from Christ? What causes people to turn from the true light? The Pharisees did it. They turned to the religion of Israel to focus on their individual selfish needs and the perception of being a good person. If you use your own ability to perceive yourself as a good person, you are not in the light. You are in the dark. Jesus is the light of the world. Many people lift themselves up in their own eyes. And they end up falling. Stepping away from the light of Christ causes this fail. Away from Christ, there is no ability to do good. Jesus lets us know that it is him or it is nothing. It was an old record. It was called him or me. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, great face yeah. line. He said, do you really want him or do you really want me? We want him. Many idols are available to us. Gold in their days was their, their currency. For us today, it's paper. Paper today is the biggest idol. Greed undermines so many people. Materialistic things. There are so many idols that some of them are so subtle and clever that sometimes you don't see them. And when you don't see it, it's the most dangerous. Because it takes you to guard them. Jesus wants us to be aware of how powerful Satan is. Adam and Eve, paradise. You have a million trees. I said, only one don't touch. God provides everything we need. Many times our emotions get the best of us. It causes us to be selfish. It makes us lash out at our family. But our own self-esteem turns our ears off to the word of God. When we turn off our ears, we turn off our eyes. If our ears are closed and our eyes are closed, how can you see the light of the world? Often, we want to make choices about the word. The word, the word is just very simple. Believe in me above all things. Love one another. But when we have conflict, it's like a sword piercing through our heart. Choices have to be made. Choose to repent. Set your hearts on Christ. Do not take offense and leave Christ in a moment of of despair. Those who hold on to Christ, those who hold on to the light of the world, the gift is eternal life.
That is the greatest reward we can have. We will be raised up by him to the highest heaven. We will rejoice in our victory over death and sin and the devil. We want to be like Simeon. Hold on to the Lord. God does not break any promise. We will see the revelation. We will be part of the glory because we are children of God. We are the children of God and we are made in the image of God. In his life, in his death, and in his resurrection. He has earned for us eternal life from, from death. Stay awake. Keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. Because Jesus Christ will, he will cause our rising on the last day. We will walk in the light, the beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Oh, shine all around us by day and by night. Because Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. Amen.
and have kept us for your kingdom, which is forever. We bless you for having changed us, that we are no longer slaves, but rather are your children of the promise in Christ. Give us faith, that which in true thanksgiving we receive the bread and wine, that is, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as a guarantee of the salvation that he purchased for us through his innocent suffering and death. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that we live as your baptized and faithful servants. Servants, Receive our prayers and thanksgiving, and grant us your abiding peace. To you alone, O Lord, be all glory, honor, and praise with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please prepare your communion. on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave it thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Take and eat the body of Jesus, given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me take and drink the blood of jesus shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins
peace of the Lord be with you. And also be you. Ah, uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.